For close to a decade now, I've talked about mech games on this channel. So it's about time I talk about one of the OGs and a defining PC franchise of the mid to late 90s. And that's the Earth Siege games that helped form the bedrock for Dynamics' epic cross-genre franchise that is Metal Tech. Not only was it a major step forward graphically when released in 1994, it was also an entirely original IP that breathed life into the fledging mecha category, establishing mechanics that have carried on for almost 30 years. Alright, stepping back a bit, the first Earth Siege is pretty dated and was mostly built upon the structure of 1989's Mech Warrior. Yes, the textured terrain, dynamic clouds, and sound effects were highly advanced and remain charming, it's just that Mech Warrior 2 and Earth Siege 2 superseded in nearly every way. I still enjoyed it, held up by the classic 90s presentation, and functioning gameplay that contains a decent amount of mech action goodness. First off, getting hold of Earth Siege and other Metal Tech games is simple thanks to the IP holders High res releasing all of them online for free and Earth Siege 1 just demanding DOSBox. I own the original Big Box and aside from a decent manual, it's not really worth tracking down. There is a question of whether you want the original floppy disk or CD-ROM version that includes voice acting. I played on the latter so I'm not sure if there are additional changes. I do know that Mission 8 of the 4th campaign crashes and requires a very old patch hosted by Sierra's website. Luckily, all of this has been covered on the Collection Chamber's installation, making playing Earth Siege an expedient process. Now that's where the good ends because the world of Earth Siege is fucking grim. After humanity hooked up the advanced AI Prometheus to manage an array of walking war machines called Cybras, it saw a whole bunch of human infighting and concluded to take a note from Skynet's playbook and just finish off the job. 20 years later of grueling destruction, a paltry human resistance emerges piloting Herx, the legally distinct battle mechs of Metal Tech's universe, putting up a desperate fight against the Cybrid's onslaught. You're just some poor sucker that's thrust into combat, so unimportant your first missions are scavenging all battles or dangerous scouting. Better pilots are too valuable to waste. Eventually, the Resistance Commander Gerling will transfer you to other sectors to plug up defenses and carry out special ops against cybered weak points before the final offensive against Prometheus. It's a dark atmosphere throughout, from your bunker to the large number of unnerving MIDI music and the thought of being ripped apart and your brain excavated. The setting draws at least a few resemblances to Terminator's Future War setting. Burnout landscapes, dark blue hues, hawking killer machines, patrolling aircraft, and drab cloth resistance fighters issuing orders. I've always found this apocalyptic war backdrop compelling, be it games, films, shows, or books, and Earth Siege contains a difficulty wall straight up that can turn off newcomers. Your hoax look less like Japanese mecha and more like industrial machines converted for war, and your first forays pitting your pitfall roadrunner against squads of cybrids often ends violently. However, contrary to what most people say, the Earth Siege games are manageable once you get a handle of them. Controlling your Herc is more in line with traditional vehicle sims, as the HUD layout is comparable to a car or maybe a forklift, much like how different car models have functionally the same dashboards. Every Herc cockpit features a variety of panels and screens that you interact with via the mouse or different hotkeys, such as selecting targets, changing piloting cameras, selecting weapon fire groups, plot waypoints, and adjust your speed. You move around with the arrow keys and twist your torso to aim. Although there's no native mouse aim support and it's quite stiff turning, there's an active tracking system that focuses your reticle on the enemy. However, it's usually off center, so you need to slightly adjust your torso when firing to guarantee a hit. Something that probably caused great frustration for players is the auto map. If you keep it passive, it's pretty hard to find objects through the pixelated fog of war. When switched to active, you'll pick up the surrounding enemies a bit revealing yourself. I imagine new time players always kept it on and then got slaughtered once every cybrid bared down on them. As a new addition, Earth Siege features regenerative shields that are of similar importance, protecting your internals and weapons from damage. They can be further directed towards your front or back and make a huge difference when assaulting cybrids head on. Because a lot of Earth Siege difficulty stems from the stiff controls, for this video, I wanted to try out a joystick. Mine is a Logitech Attack 3 I picked up from my brother's flatmate's shelf for $20, a perfect addition for the channel. Enabling joystick support for DOSBox is through the config file and the applicable control scheme in the game's options. I found the best one being the Flight Stick Pro and using the stick for aiming. Otherwise, unless you have a proper pedal setup, the mouse and keyboard remain necessary. It doesn't solve the stiffness entirely, but did help aiming, and the simple fun of having a stick and trigger to aim and fire bursts of machine guns is always cool. Most joysticks are cheap as chips. 
the pedals less so. Let me know what it's like with a full setup. Finally, before anyone comments, you can hold down the right mouse button that enables a very loose, however workable mouse aim. Unfortunately, I only found out about it when editing this video, so if a joystick is absent and you keep struggling, try it out. After these primary controls, there's more advanced options and panels in your Herc. These include the condition of targets, issuing commands, tactical map, and current status of your Herc and teammates. There's a max of three fellow pilots, and they work fine in following simple orders and fighting cybrids scanning the area, and travelling to waypoints. They can be directed either individually or as a group, a novel feature at the time. Rarely they became stuck or refused to follow an order, although constantly bumping into them was probably just my own poor piloting. They get better at piloting over time, although for some reason you can't switch squadmates until they die, making a veteran's loss in the late game a serious problem. There's a deliberate slowness in your actions, the shifting of the camera, the shaking of the herc, and the ambient electronic sounds. It's all very immersive, and I can only imagine the first impressions back in 94. Before deployment, you choose from about 8 Herc variants, going from light, medium, and heavy, progressively increasing the number of hard points we can attach weapons. These are divided between energy, cannon, and missile types. Cannons and missiles have longer range and limited ammo, while the former are powerful but consume energy needed for movement, sensors, and shield regeneration. I relied on having several heavy machine guns to comfortably carve up a cyber patrol at several hundred meters. Herc's design and gear are gradually unlocked and require salvage to be built, acquired from disabled cybrids. Salvage can also include intact weapons and is needed for repairs. This mirrors the first Mech Warrior and Mech 2 Mercs. Despite being a great mechanic, it's rarely used in the genre. There is a concern over having enough salvage to repair your Herc's. But I had plenty of salvage, and you can always recycle light weapons and hercs. After all, they're almost useless by the mid-game. Hercs like the character of mechs from Macross, Gundam, and Battletech, but they do have a realistic grounded feel to them, like repurposed construction tech, giving a dark retro future look. The missions of Earth Siege are the usual fare of scouting, recovering intel, clearing strong points, protecting your base, or facing off against a new cybrid model. Campaign missions are partially randomized and frequently repeated. If you don't feel like following waypoints for 10 minutes for the 5th time, reloading a save will change the mission type. The non-randomized set piece missions allow more interesting tactical planning for squadmates, even if most are about destroying a cyber base. You can actually fail or balk some objectives and still carry on the campaign, albeit with lost gear and a chewing out from command. It's another reason why I think people overstate the difficulty. Levels are only about 10 or 15 minutes long and don't demand perfection. Earth Siege is hard, more down to the controls and random missions creating a very uneven difficulty curve, switching back and forth from peaceful patrols where you don't ever see an enemy to total bloodbaths where your team is ripped apart. Annoyingly, many missions demand you kill every surrounding enemy before you can exit, making the airborne cybrids a constant nuisance as they don't inflict any damage but buzz around before you shoot them down. The final missions do offer a decent conclusion that push your Herc driving and team management skills to a satisfying victory. Once you understand the gameplay, the missions, tactics, tone and theme, and ample mechs, it all comes together nicely. The initial steep difficulty and general datedness didn't stop me from liking Earth Siege as a cool retro PC title and would be better remembered if not for the runaway success of 1995's Mech Warrior 2. Within a year, Dynamics' response was Earth Siege 2, a better looking, sounding, and playing sequel that doesn't change much from the first game. Despite its solid reception, it's perhaps even less played now because of its primarily Windows 95 exclusivity. No easy DOS box option here. Don't even bother with a big box version, the innards are lackluster. Thankfully, the collection chamber's jerry rigging has Earth Siege 2 working most of the time. Mechanically and partially narratively, Earth Siege 2 feels more like a remake than anything new. Set shortly after Earth Siege, the AI Prometheus fled to the moon and was somehow able to develop a new cybrid army for the reconquest of Earth. I assume you're playing as the same pilot from the first game as missions, hercs, teammates and cybrid attacks come much faster. There is a simple tutorial for newcomers, an inclusion the first game lacked. The talking heads in the mission briefings are now replaced by short FMVs of girling and are frequently reused. The voice acting in the original wasn't remarkable, yet it added flavour to the briefings. Their absence doesn't take away from Earth Siege's brutality. 
bombed out buildings, scorched landscapes, and seemingly unending cybers reminds you how increasingly desperate the war is. It's unfortunate they didn't spend a bit more time fleshing out the characters and world until the veritable lore dump that was Star Siege several years later. After surviving another dogged battle, I'd rather crack open a cold one with my teammates back at base than hear Girling repeat the same praise or dismay lines for the dozenth time. The most immediate advancement from the first game is a leap in 3D graphics and audio quality, flexing the then new Windows 95 operating system. Levels are larger and wider, with the gameplay making good use of the improved draw distances for long-range dueling. The enhanced texture work better reveals the nigh apocalyptic setting in the maroon and amber colours, albeit at the cost of night maps. Cybrats have a slightly biomechanical look to them, and the way they break apart, collapse and explode into large fireballs is very nice. The presentation only gets better, or worse as it may, in the dedicated CD quality music. There are less tracks as a whole, yet their arrangement is much more memorable to listen to. Complimentary sound effects are a step up. Crunchier explosions, crisper lasers and machine gun rounds, and a computer lady voice coolly informing you of each kill. Your cockpit will now sustain damage, disrupting sensors and cameras as you desperately try to hack it out. It's yet another notch in Dynamics' immersive belt. The campaign progression is familiar. You're sent to a bunch of different sectors in an uphill fight before the finale where you take down Prometheus. Again. Although mission types are much the same, following the set waypoints and either patrol, defense or destruction ops, they're no longer randomized with set maps, objectives and enemies. In a few ways, it's a better single player game than MechWarrior 2. You have a clear role in the story, detailed set objectives and plenty of room to maneuver and rethink how to complete missions as failure can lead to some branching outcomes, like missing out on new weapons and herc variants. You're actually given a recommended loadout to keep things simple, and squad mates are much more adept at following orders. They're quite reliable in targeting objects, defending territory, and holding out against cybers, at least for 1997. However, it's sometimes a step back compared to the first game, as although the first few sectors are a nice mix of appropriately arid landscapes, you spend the last half of the campaign fighting in a bunch of volcanoes and endless snowlands that use a very repetitive color palette, blurring all the missions together. The final stretch of levels take place on the moon, which should be a spoiler if they all didn't play the exact same as on Earth. It's a little bit disappointing holding the climax on a bunch of grey-black craters you blast through. All things considered, Earth Siege 2 has a decent campaign that struggles to be memorable. That doesn't make it easy. The absence of mission RNG and increased enemy count will check your progress. The levels typically short length tempered frustrations, as the occasional difficulty spikes made the campaign slightly longer for me than the first one. The gameplay is more of the same. Controlling a Herc is identical, from moving, targeting, firing, using your computer, and issuing commands. Cybers will come at your team in greater numbers, making proper shield management and weapon loadouts essential to survive. The different, rugged landscapes host much more fun firefights, except the difficulty still often comes from the stiff movement and lack of mouse support, a feature that was available in MechWarrior 2. Unfortunately, the Collection Chambers version doesn't seem to allow key rebinding nor joystick support. Luckily, plenty of joysticks and applications allow you to remap the buttons to different keys, and with some patience, it's as viable as the first game, albeit remaining stiff. As a workaround for the difficulty, I suggest targeting the cybered legs for easy disability kills, and it's not like the missions are that long anyway. Big kudos to the collection chamber making Earth Siege 2 a breezy install, however, a proper remaster wouldn't be a miss. Managing Herx at base is a bit different. There's still the need to repair and collect salvage from fallen enemies to build new Hercs, except you can now manufacture weapon parts, and there's different non-combat gear, like improved sensors and shields. It seems your gear is at a greater risk of being destroyed in mission, demanding refits that can cost a lot of salvage. Earth Siege 1's abundant salvage is less pronounced here, making the advanced missile racks, heavy machine guns, and plasma weapons all the more precious. Again, you can't switch out squad mates, making a veteran loss worthy of a reload. The greatest addition to your arsenal is not a new Herc, but the Razor aircraft. Functioning as a heavy gunship, you can fly across the battlefield, launching volleys into cybered forces with little in the way of anti-air units. It's constantly flying like a VTOL, your only concern is being targeting and veering left and right, but it's very hard to hit targets with anything but missiles, so don't expect cool dogfights. Most missions allow you to use the Razor and seem designed around that intent in the very lengthy, waypoint-heavy missions that are otherwise a slog. 
The Razor was a functionable concept that wasn't seen again after Earth Siege 2 due to it nullifying any challenge, as long as you've got enough missiles to easily blow everyone away. I get the feeling it was all for Dynamics to showcase the scale of their improved graphical capabilities rather than anything else. Once you strip away the improved graphics in Razor, Earth Siege 2 doesn't feel much like a sequel, bordering on a remake of the first game. From objective metrics, it's a better game, probably designed missions, interesting tactical scenarios, ample customization for the Hercs, and nice presentation on top. Yet when reflecting back, I found Earth Siege 1 just a bit more charming on the whole, largely due to not having a bunch of boring pixelated volcanoes you walked around. Dynamics would take a couple of years off to re-engineer the series into a truly epic sci-fi franchise as the Star Siege and Tribes games. Those stories are for another time as this one concludes. Considering their freeware status currently and the collection chamber installs taking only minutes to set up on modern systems, it's about as good as any time to try them out. It'd be great if there was a dedicated remastering of the whole franchise, considering that after a quarter of a century later, hulking war machines methodically battling it out across blasted landscapes retains a certain appeal that Earth Siege amply satisfies. Oh, it's 